Tim Watts was installed as the High Sheriff of the West Midlands today. He joins 55 High Sheriffs serving the counties of England and Wales who are appointed for a one-year term of office. My name is Don McLean and I'm proud and privileged to have hosted the proceedings for Tim. Tim entered into office by signing the declaration as directed by the Sheriff's Act of 1887 at the Queen Elizabeth II Law Courts. The office of High Sheriff is the oldest secular office in the United Kingdom after the Crown. In fact, the office of the High Sheriff is over 1,400 years old. Its roots stem from Saxon times before the Norman Conquest. The word Sheriff comes from Shire Reeve and since the 10th century a Sheriff has been appointed for each Shire or County, originally to be responsible for an entire administration, financial, military and judicial. Since 1461 the Sheriffs of the Counties have been known as High Sheriffs and have been nominated annually on the morrow of St Martin, that's November the 12th. The nominations are made in a ceremony held in the Royal Courts of Justice. The three names for each county are placed on a roll and in March of the following year this roll is submitted to Her Majesty in Council. The High Sheriff's sword is the symbol of the Queen's justice and the High Sheriff's badge displays the swords of mercy, katana with the point cut off and justice, both of which are carried at the coronation of a sovereign crossed in saltire and above them is the royal crown with an ermine border to symbolise the judiciary. Queen Elizabeth I is generally believed to have originated the practice that continues to this day of the sovereign choosing the high sheriff by pricking a name on the sheriff's roll with a bodkin. The declaration ceremony was followed by a celebratory lunch at Aston University, located in the heart of Aston. This was attended by past High Sheriffs, Lord Mayors, Mayoresses, Mayors and dignitaries from across the county, as well as Tim's family and friends. Tim Watts is rightfully very proud of his local heritage and, with this in mind, a wonderful West Midlands theme was created to complement the High Sheriff's celebratory lunch. Aston University provided the excellent catering and is perfectly located to host the event. Its roots go back to 1895 when it was the Birmingham Municipal Technical School, later developing into the College of Advanced Technology, which then gained university status in 1966 to become Aston University. Aston has the right credentials to offer all students from a diverse range of backgrounds a friendly and inspiring learning environment. I particularly love Tim's attention to detail and his place settings were limited edition Corgi Minis finished in British Racing Green. And what better luncheon gift than Cadbury's chocolates, especially as Sir Adrian Cadbury was high sheriff himself. There was of course plenty of entertainment. My particular favourite was the reception greeting given by the Town Hall Gospel Choir who, by the way, were the winners of the first ever Songs of Praise Gospel Choir of the Year in 2013. The 30-strong choir were declared the winners of that prestigious title after beating five church and community choirs from across the UK to the post in a closely contested final. Azad Doll drummers escorted the newly appointed High Sheriff and June to their awaiting guests. They performed throughout the UK in such prestigious venues as the Royal Albert Hall and the NEC. Hajit Singh, founder of the Azad Arts and Azad Doll Group, said their main aim is to promote, facilitate and develop the Punjabi arts, culture, tradition and history, and to do that through community, by empowerment and education. Sheriff. Yeah. Dr. Ursula Clark, who is investigating the linguistic variation of the West Midlands region, its relationship with identity and its enduring longevity in the face of continuing public discrimination, gave an insight to the Bromish accent and its interpretation. We hear <coughs> accents and we tend to make 
judgments based on what we hear, we don't listen to what is said. We were treated to a fabulous rendition from Joanna Skelt, Birmingham's very own Poet Laureate. Joanna has been writing poetry for a number of years and has a lot of performance experience, including combining music with poetry using aspects of drama. There is a new sheriff in town. Her Majesty the Queen pricked his name from a parchment list with a silver bodkin. Tim Watts. His name will be written into Birmingham's history, just as the philanthropist entrepreneurs before him, Matthew Bolton, James Watt and the Cadbury's, whose sense of social responsibility envisaged, enacted, magicked up the Bourneville model village. While Tim created Birmingham's Community Foundation, brought Nietzsche's baths, made a creche for Somali kids. What will this sheriff standing here without cowboy hat or holster, not gunslinging, or having ridden wildly into town, though he could do on his many horses, <laughs> but with ceremonial garb, standing steadfast, with wreath of golden oak leaves and Tudor rose, a sword of justice, sharp, and sword of mercy, blunted, both crossed, bearing the weight of past intrigues, the bitter battles to gather taxes, the royal favours and resentments, executions ordered, and somewhere blood spilled, then wiped away again. In October 2012, she received an Arts Council commission to write and perform with a poet from Sierra Leone. That included improvisations with a saxophone and drums. She has also been running an international poetry reading group for several years. And this is from, the, uh, from the, the science teacher who says, light travels faster than sound, which is why Timothy appears bright until you hear him speak. <laughs> Please put your hands together for the brand new sheriff of the West Midlands, Dr. Tim Watts! Tim feels truly humbled and honoured to have been appointed as High Sheriff, the oldest continuous office under the crown. I don't know whether to say thank you. I'll cogitate. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this time, for those of you who are in court this morning, I've got my notes with me. How embarrassing to start uh, in this position by looking down and finding you haven't got the running order and you're supposed to be running it. Never mind. Uh, this time, I've got them. And um, I thought the judge uh, actually did the same thing this time as he did to me last time. Uh, he mentioned uh, that we'd met before that the prosecution of felons, the oldest in, uh, police uh, force in the world at 300 years, and he was the guest speaker. And I had been asked uh, to respond uh, to the, His Honour, uh, Judge Bill Davis, um, and I, I wrote a fairly dry speech, uh, having researched him and his wonderful career, think it would be appropriate. He was light today, and I hadn't met him before. He was light, he was humorous, he was wonderful, and he kept the whole room uh, enthralled. So I did approach the podium with trepidation. And all I could say to him was, Sir, I'm more accustomed to coming up before a judge. Anyway, so uh, he let me off with that. I'd like to give a special thanks to Greg Lawson, my under-sheriff, uh, for the support that he's given me to date, uh, and uh, my chaplain who supported me today. Um, I'm infamous, if not famous, uh, for delegation. Um, and uh, although I'm thanking him for what he's done, He's got no idea what he's going to do, <laughs> and that will come later. Uh, to all my friends, families and colleagues who are here today to support me, you know how very much I appreciate what you've already done for me. Thank you very much indeed. Um, to my friend, uh, Lord Michael Whitby and Lady Gaynor, may I thank you for your attendance today. And also may I welcome uh, the two Lord Mayors and the five Mayors from the West Midlands. And I'm happy today to commit myself. It is a tradition uh, in this role uh, that you use your uh, good abilities to try and uh, encourage charitable giving and try and raise a fund 
um, to give to good causes. And I've thought about this long and hard. I thought the best that I could do would be to support uh, the Lord Mayors and the Mayors in their chosen charities. And that's not delegation or being lazy. I think that they are closer to the grassroots of the Midlands and that we really underestimate and don't know how close they are and what a tremendous job they do individually and collectively for ourselves uh, in looking after the community that is uh, the West Midlands. And I thank them for it and I intend to support all of them equally. Um, I also would like to make a personal uh, thanks um, to Aston University who have given us this room today and, and their, their staff uh, and, and their uh, amenities. I think it's truly outstanding and I'm, I'm really, really happy uh, actually to be part of this establishment. For 20 years now I've been on their uh, management committee and privileged to do so and I think this could be Birmingham's best kept secret. Um, how many of you know that Aston University is now in the top 30 of all higher education tables in the United Kingdom and is the leading university for graduate employability. Uh, the last week only, um, the university's minister, David Willett, publicly praised Aston and said that Aston's work on behalf of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Companies program was the shining example of how universities can help promote SMEs to drive and deliver economic growth. You may have spotted uh, when we came in, and I'm going to point to it now, uh, a poster at the end of the room. It says Aston Medical School. Um, and what they've, I'm totally impressed with this. What they've set themselves to do uh, is 50 years ago they became a royal charter and a university. And I feel it appropriate to start my year by supporting them in their appeal. They want to raise money for a new medical school. Birmingham hasn't seen a new medical school for 150 years. And yet we all know the need for new doctors and the shortage of them. Um, Professor Asif Ahmed has taken on this project and is looking for philanthropic uh, outcomes. He set himself the target to train 50 doctors from the poorest wards of the West Midlands to celebrate their 50th year. Now, the money to, to, to put a doctor out is over £300,000. He's come up with a new formula where he's going to take the most eminent professors from the hospitals and get them almost for free to come in and give one seminar a week to his chosen cohort. And he believes that he can create 50 qualified GPs from these communities that need help and assistance. And he believes that they will stay as GPs in those hinterlands, in those communities uh, to do good. And I am absolutely, uh, absolutely in awe of him. Uh, and I think he needs help in doing this. So with this in mind, I intend to make my first contribution as High Sheriff today to, it's called the 50-50, and you can see it on the poster there. Uh, they want 50 graduates from the indigenous areas here that are of a lower social economic output to become 50 GPs to celebrate their 50th year. And I'm going to ask my wife uh, to deliver, uh, please, uh, to Dr. Ursula Clark there, uh, from Aston University, a cheque from the Pertemps Network Connie Watts Foundation for £50,000 uh, to, to kick them off on their campaign. And we wish you the very best of luck with it. I think that's a great with me in thanking those who have tried to entertain you today. 
and I'll speak more about it in a moment. Um, uh, we had the, the Town Hall Choir, the Gospel Choir, winner of the Song of Praise, Choir of the Year 2013. I'm sure you'll agree they were fantastic. Uh, the Acid Doll Group, who made such a dramatic entrance for me. And if you look in there, the programmes that you have, you'll see the work that they're all doing for the community. And, and getting right back down to those grassroots that I mentioned. I think we've had a fabulous celebratory lunch here today. And I want to thank again uh, Dr. Ursula Clark uh, for her wonderful speech and also Joanna Skelt uh, for such a, a wonderful presentation. And may I say poignant, poignant poem that I hope I'm going to get a copy of um, because I want to keep that forever. Um, you built up the Brummies and you knocked us down a bit, but that's fair enough. We are a city of a thousand trades, and the reason that we continue is that we continue to change ourselves. We don't mind being knocked down, and we will build ourselves up again, and we're not doing a bad job at the moment. So, everybody get behind Birmingham. Um, I, I, can we give them all a round of applause, please? now I come on to my old mate Don McLean. I asked somebody the one good thing about him, in fact the whole lot of you, but nobody could remember what it was. Um, he has an array of titles. Uh, Her Majesty the Queen gave him an MBE. The Pope made him a knight. And, uh, and that's only quite recently, and I would like to sincerely uh, congratulate you for that. Thank you. And I'll take the piss on everything else. Um, he's also had a silver uh, heart. Uh, from the Variety Club for the work that he's done for it. But I know because he's told me that the award that he holds most and greatest to his heart comes from that wonderful institution, The Stage, uh, who voted him the United Kingdom's number one pantomime dame. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Don's getting a little bit old, as you can see. Uh, and when he came here today and you saw me in my outfit and the wonderful Lord Mayors and Lords in their chains of there, and he thought he'd been engaged for Dick Whittington the music. <laughs> and no, you're not borrowing it. Uh, all right. Finally, uh, I would like to thank my ambassadors. I hope that they looked after you, pointed you in the right direction, uh, and made your uh, journey here a, a, a pleasant one. Particularly, I'd like to point out Suzanne Randall. Uh, where are you, Suzanne? Please stand up. Where is she? There we are. <laughs> Suzanne seriously has been truly outstanding in pulling all this together today. Uh, and I, I seriously couldn't do it without her. She's absolutely great. She was ably assisted herself with her own assistant, young Jeff the Chef, from corporate occasions, who's helped me do all these sort of events for the last 35 years. I'm also conscious, and indeed proud, to be following in the footsteps of many of the past high shows, details of whom are with the programmes in front of you, and a number of whom, the more recent ones, are here with us today. And I thank you all for making the effort to come and uh, help me uh, celebrate today. I also want to thank you all for what you did in your term. I am going to repeat again, and I'm not going to apologise for my repetition. Uh, my predecessor, uh, uh, Christine Braddock and, and Anthony, truly did an outstanding job. And they've set a very hard bar, bar uh, for us all to try and follow. And I really uh, want to say once again thank you to her for what she achieved and for the way that she allowed June and I uh, to be the apprentices uh, to follow in her footsteps. It is an honour to be nom nominated for this very prestigious 17th century uh, role of High Sheriff and I intend to use the year in my office to shine the light on the West Midlands, particularly those who are talented, innovative and actually reside and work in our county. We have some fantastic people and with a bit of spotlight on them, a bit of illumination, I believe that they will grow and blossom and make the West Midlands as great as it is becoming. The West Midlands is my home. I was born and brought up here. 
and we have an abundance of diverse communities and I plan to celebrate, promote and reward the individuals who make this region such a thriving community to date and thank you all for coming. He sees this as a unique opportunity to give something back to the county in which he has lived and worked for many years and he intends to make a meaningful contribution to the region and its people. Tim Watts has created a High Sheriff Charitable Fund which he has promised to share with the three Lord Mayors and four Mayors of his Shreve. He made his first personal contribution to the Aston University 50-50 appeal to celebrate 50 years of achieving their Royal Charter to educate 50 doctors per year through a new medical school, the first to be opened in the West Midlands for over 150 years, with a donation of £50,000. Tim will embrace the history of the role and undertake the ceremonial, civic and social events and opportunities with pride. The afternoon was brought to a climax with a flash mob performance by the Beat Freaks. They are entrepreneurial former students who've established a local social enterprise to upskill young local people in creative arts and enable them to showcase their talents. Tim would be very satisfied if, at the end of the year, he has made a real difference to communities across the West Midlands and hopes that the good people of the region support him in any charitable initiatives he undertakes. It was a wonderful day. The sun shone. Tim Watson, the Pope, they always get good weather. I certainly enjoyed myself, and so did everyone who attended. We all know that with Tim's unbounded enthusiasm, this is going to be a great year for the West Midlands.